So my presentation title is a novel method for stock assessment under biological data limitation and limited accessibility. I added some words uh, in this morning. Age or size composition data is uh, very useful for detailed stock assessments. However, uh, they are not available in many cases. So in these cases, the production model is common to use for stock assessments to uh, estimate population parameters like uh, intrinsic growth rate R or the carrying capacity K. However, parameter estimation is difficult, especially when our access to the stock is limited. So we built a modified production model uh, that can work under such limited accessibility. And in this presentation, I introduce our modified production model through our stock assessment for a local population of Japanese sea cucumber. Sea cucumbers has been uh, exploited since early times in East Asia, and these are these pictures are uh, dishes of sea cucumbers. It's the Japanese style sliced sea cucumber with um, vinegar and soy sauce, and this is the Chinese style. Um, it was so shocking for me at first, but uh, actually tastes good, so good. <laughs> And recently, the demand from China is increasing, and so exploitation expanded all over the world. So naturally, there's a common concern about stock decreasing, so that 12 species were red-listed so far. This is our target, Japanese, sea sp uh, Japanese spiky sea cucumber, or a Japanese. And uh, this is a living one, and uh, these are exploited ones and dried and became so tiny. They, they are uh, ex exported to China. So uh, this species is also red listed as endangered in 2012. And as well as other sea cucumber species, its biological information is poorly known. So, uh, the application of the production model seems to be appropriate. We focused on a small fishing area in the most east part of Japan. Uh, here's Finland and here's Japan. And the area is in the uh, Tokyo Bay here. And uh, so small fishing area. And uh, this picture shows the trend of catch in uh, Tokyo Bay. And uh, the area is shown by the most lightest gray, this color. So you can see the exploitation started in this area uh, in 2007. So uh, seven years of daily catch data were available. And you can also see the uh, catch expanded at first, but now decreasing. To use the production model and obtain the population parameters, we first estimated uh, from the fishery data the initial abundances, which is uh, uh, abundance before exploitation, shown by the uh, solid line here. And the dashed line shows the amount of catch. So you can see the recent years the fishing pressure was so high. Then we tried to fit the ordinary production model to these initial abundances. However, here arises the problem. Uh, this, this picture is uh, almost the same to the previous one, but now the dashed line shows the um, unfished stock abundance, so it is an uh, initial abundance minus the amount of catch. And uh, for example, between this year and this year, you can see the population increased so much, and 
between this year and this year, the population rather decreased. <coughs> so the annual population growth rate fluctuated so much uh, from negative value to over 10. And if the ordinary production model is fitted uh, directly, the estimated intrinsic growth rate exceeds 2.5, so it is so unnatural. Therefore, uh, it seems to be problematic to fit the ordinary production model directly to this data. Here, a uh, concept of limited accessibility might explain the situation. Actually, the uh, Ajapnix has a uh, migration behavior that leads the limited accessibility. They usually live in a rock leaf, and when the water temperature becomes low in autumn or early winter, a part of the population, uh, not, not all, the part of the population migrates to the sand area. And when the water temperature again uh, <coughs> becomes high, they return to the rock reef and reproduce together with the remainings. Because um, the sea cucumber fishery in this, in this area needs uh, done by bottom trolling, fishers can access only the individuals in the sand area, so there certainly is um, limited accessibility. And so what we saw, what we observe, uh, observed as an um, uh, initial abundance is, was actually uh, only a part of the total abundances. And if there's a, a certain amount of hidden resources behind, the observed uh, population growth fluctuated more and then uh, become higher than we expected. So we included the migration process to the ordinal production model. So here is the, <coughs> I call it as the modified production model. And uh, here's a total abundance and uh, fraction, uh, po uh, fraction P of the total abundance migrates to the sand area and become accessible abundance. Of course, exploitation is done only from the accessible abundance and the unfished individuals return to the rock reef and contribute to reproduction. Now the reproduction is represented by logistic function uh, containing intrinsic growth rate R and uh, carrying capacity K. With this model, we first evaluated the uh, ability of the model with uh, simulation data and then applied to the actual fishery data. Uh, this step is done by uh, Bayesian, Bayesian method, MCMC. And at last, we conduct future projection. Now, I talk about the simulation. Uh, a thousand simulation data were created according to the model. And mean migration rates were set at 0 0.3, 0 0.6, and 1. Uh, one, is, one corresponds to uh, the case in which there's no limitation on accessibility. And this time, parameter estimation was done by maximum likelihood method. First, we used seven years of uh, initial abundance, uh, initial accessible abundance uh, simulation data. Here, the estimations badly biased this one, especially when the migration rate was so low. So uh, this result indicates that we cannot apply our uh, modified production model directly to our fishery data. Then we fixed the value of R, intrinsic growth rate, uh, at true value. 
and estimated other parameters. So now the fixation of R improved the estimation scale for other parameters. Uh, although there still remains uh, little biases. So we decided to set an inform informative prior for intrinsic growth rate uh, when, I, when we analyzed the actual data. Then we saw the effect of time series length, uh, seven years versus 30 years. So <clears throat> here, uh, long time series also improved the estimation scale. And it indicates that if uh, in the future the fishery data accumulates, we might be able to uh, estimate all of the parameters, including R. Next, we apply it to the actual fishery data. And parameter estimation was done by MCMC, and an informative prior for the intrinsic growth rate R was set. The informative prior was set uh, based on an empirical allometric relationship among body mass, temperature of the habitat, and intrinsic growth rate, uh, like this. And uh, this is the uh, <coughs> our informative prior, which indicates the uh, mean intrinsic growth rate is 0 0.5. Now this is the result of MCMC showing the uh, total abundance divided by BMSY. You can clearly show the uh, amount of the stock is declining. And especially in recent two years, the uh, total abundance is lower than BMSY. Because the fishery started uh, only seven years ago, and probably it, uh, it doesn't reach to the equilibrium yet. So uh, if the if current level of fishery goes on, the situation might get worse. And then we conducted future project projection. The 20 years of future projection was done under various fishing rate. Now, the, this fishing rate is not against the total abundance, but uh, against accessible abundance. And these are the result. Uh, the left panel shows the expected catch in uh, 2033, the uh, 20 years future. And the right one shows the probability that uh, total abundance in 2033 is lower than each reference point, BMSY, half of BMSY and 0.2 BMSY, which corresponds to the collapse of fishery. So now we can see that uh, <coughs> the catch was maximized when the fishing rate was 0.4. And under that situation, the uh, probability of collapse is so low. So we consider that F equals 0.4 will be appropriate for future catch and also for conservation. In summary, we built the modified production model, which included the concept of limited accessibility. And it worked well with an informative prior for intrinsic growth rate R. And sufficient time series will enable to uh, estimate all of the parameters, in, uh, including intrinsic growth rate. And abundance of a Japanese in this area was declining. So appropriate conservation, for example, F equals 0 0.4, should be con conducted. That's all now. Thanks for listening.